Hi, this is the Tropical Tibbet for Sunday, August 8th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. Well, we're getting deeper into the Atlantic hurricane season now. The peak period is usually between late August and late October. As we get into August, we start to really watch this part of the Atlantic Basin where tropical waves leaving Africa come westward and start to develop more frequently during this part of the summer. And we're starting to watch some disturbances out here. The National Hurricane Center is currently watching two of them right about here, Invest 94L and Invest 93L, both tropical waves, areas of circulation that are coming westward and will be watched over the next few days. Here's a more zoomed in look of the two areas. This is the Lesser Antilles Islands here, Eastern Caribbean, Puerto Rico. And we're watching both of these areas of circulation. And we'll start with 93 first, as this one likely has pretty limited chances for development. As you can see the surface circulation in here, but it's displaced to the east of the area of convection that you can see on the west side. And the big problem for this system is that it's highly decoupled at the moment. There's been northeasterly shear over it for the last couple of days. And as a result, the mid-level circulation that was associated with it is way down here highly decoupled from the location of the surface circulation. And this is likely to prevent its development over the next few days. No numerical models really suggest that this will be able to become organized again. And for now, chances are pretty low. 94L to its west, however, may have some better chances of eventually becoming a tropical storm. If we look closely at the low-level clouds here, you'll see that there's a strong south-southwesterly surge on its backside, northeasterly trade winds dipping down to the west and so we have this very sharp wave axis in here and in case that's difficult to see this was an ASCAT pass which is pretty old at this point uh, however uh, you can still see that it's got the same kind of structure uh, that it has now and even 12 hours ago when this pass uh, came in it had a similar structure and so that's basically what we're dealing with very strong wind shift here and so this strip of vorticity or rotation Although it has not yet organized into a circular circulation, that is usually likely to happen when you get a structure like this. This will eventually wrap up and become a ball of rotation over the next couple of days. And the question will become whether it's organized enough to be a tropical depression or storm. One of the things standing in its way is a massive dry air that you can see here in the water vapor satellite loop. Lots of black and dark gray colors just to the west of 94L. And this is likely to eventually get wrapped in. If we do get a circulation here, that would mean that there's northwest winds on the backside that kind of help draw this dry air into itself. And this seems to be the primary limitation going forward. Right now, wind shear is fairly light and water is warm and there's very little else standing in the way, but this dry air uh, can really limit the development of tropical waves in this part of the world. Let's check out what some of the models think about this wave. This is the GFS showing the current 850 millibar vorticity or spin in shading here. This shows you where the rotation is maximized along this wave axis. And the barbs here show you the upper level 200 millibar flow. So at the moment we have ridging, kind of rotating clockwise over the wave that's sitting down here. So very little wind shear at the moment, as we mentioned. And as we go forward, we'll see that this continues to be the case on the model as this moves north of Barbados. And by Monday evening or early Tuesday, we could have a circulation that could even be a tropical depression or weak tropical storm north of Barbados here, moving toward the Eastern Caribbean. We still have that ridging aloft overhead, not a lot of wind shear here. But if we look at the mid-level moisture field on the model, you'll see there's our wave 94L and then that massive dry air, just as we saw on satellite imagery to the northwest of the storm. And you can see how it's starting to get wrapped in as this moves north of Barbados. And this is the kind of thing where the dry air could get ingested and start eroding convection, preventing further organization and strengthening of the system. And you can see that in this particular model on the GFS, there's really not a lot of development here, not a lot of closed contours, not really strong circulation as this enters the Caribbean. And although it is weakly closed, it is, it is quite a weak system here. And most models currently agree that this is the case. And it seems like dry air getting wrapped in is kind of the main reason for that. Now, one thing we will have to watch for is the possibility that a section of moisture like this is able to become isolated from the dry air around it and be able to feed back and generate a small circulation despite the dry air on the periphery. And this can be shown in something like the H-Wharf model 
which shows this ball of moisture here becoming isolated from the dry air around the periphery and able to develop as it crosses over into the Caribbean. And so we get more of a bona fide tropical storm here that's getting a little stronger as it moves past the Lesser Antilles and uh, toward Puerto Rico and the bigger islands farther west. Now the caveat here is that this h wharf model tends to be overly aggressive with tropical waves in this part of the world. And so we generally lean a little bit less aggressive than this model tends to, to think. And so between this and the GFS forecast, which is for a weaker storm, odds right now seem to favor kind of a weak wave or tropical depression or tropical storm winds of 30 to 40 miles per hour entering the islands in the eastern Caribbean. It doesn't seem very likely that we'll see a developing hurricane in this region, at least at this moment. We'll see how the wave evolves with the dry air next to it over the next couple of days. Again, there's a lot of it in the way here. You can see it in the water vapor loop, big mass of dark. And so we'll see how this interacts with that over the next day or two. It's running out of time though to develop before hitting the island. So at this point, not expecting a huge wind event, but gusty winds and heavy rains will affect the islands on Monday and Tuesday. Now, as we go forward, we may have to watch this wave for some time yet, even after it passes the islands. This is the 500 millibar mid-level steering for Tuesday. This is where 94L would be, somewhere near the northeastern Caribbean islands. And if you look to the north, there is a ridge over the western Atlantic in general. This unfortunately means that the steering currents uh, will be pushing this toward other land masses, such as Hispaniola, Cuba, maybe the Bahamas, going forward over the next several days. And during the course of this week, this strip of ocean and islands may need to be watching for this system to potentially find more favorable grounds for intensification and we'll have to keep an eye on it just in case it develops further later down the road. The European Ensemble does suggest that this corridor could see elevated probabilities of tropical storm formation as 94L generally moves west-northwestward through this belt over the, the course of this week. So we'll be keeping a close eye on this as it is the best system that, or the system that has the best chance of development out of the systems we currently have. NHC gives it about a 50% chance of eventually becoming a tropical storm as it takes this general track to the west-northwest toward the Caribbean islands. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.